you hear that absolute silence i'm back in my beloved scotland this is cardrona in people's part of the mcdonald's hotel group i've checked in i played last night i'm back out this morning it's just beautiful that's not a bad first shot of the day that is right on the flag it drops oh i'm in such a good mood what a great start a little nudge 170 yards so that first shot in the morning was in fact a 25 degree hybrid a five hybrid and uh, i'm telling you that because it's got some relevance in what is about to come in today's video fresh pair of foot joys on which i'm absolutely loving straight out the box right start the day with a birdie although two from here would suffice got a chance you know yeah we've got the pace early doors that will do good start so in today's episode we have a huge amount to get through i'm going to show you around cardrona i'm going to uh, we're going to have photo of the week and i'm guaranteed to win this time but maybe more importantly i'm going to give you five reasons why you're making the game far more difficult than you perhaps need to What a shot that is. I'm on fire. I only just had breakfast. Okay, this is a perfect opportunity for golden nugget of information number one. That shot there was 170 yards and I had a couple of things that I needed to consider and so do you. First of all, we've got a bunker directly online to the flag. That's a hazard that could cause me a lot of problems and add a number of shots to my round if I don't get things right. Second thing is, it's cold, it's early in the morning, I'm not really warmed up, the ball's not going to fly as far in these dewy conditions. That's another consideration. But I've also got a big wide green and I've got a lot of green that is left of that pin. So, first of all, make sure you start to assess the situation before you reach for a club. So what I'm aiming for here is centre to left of the green. I've got a club that is going to cover the bunker just in case anything leaks out to that right hand side. And what I'm guaranteed of doing, if things go well, is landing on a safe part of the green. I two put and I get out of here instead of the other alternative which is getting the wrong decision going at that flag landing in that bunker and all of a sudden a par becomes a bogey a double bogey so course management is huge in reducing your score right this next nugget of information is going to need some data it's coming from shotscope and it's their analytics of putting statistics and first of all if you just take a look at the um, the distance of 18 to 24 foot from the hole a scratch handicap golfer will make 14 percent of those puts a 15 handicapper will make 11 percent the difference between is negligible because not many people hole puts from 18 to 24 foot irrelevant of what level you play at then zip forward between 0 and 6 foot from the hole a scratch golfer will make 92% of those putts. A 15 handicapper will make 84% of those putts. So 9 out of 10 as opposed to 8 out of 10. Again, negligible difference. Why is this so important? Because the concentration must be on these distance putts. Not about holding them. It's about distance control. So the element you need to practice is not holding putts. It's about getting on a putting green, getting yourself in a distance that quite often you'll be from the flag getting that distance control right, getting within that bin lid, that zero to six feet, and that again will ensure you're two putting more often than not. Or you can just hold it. Oh! Right, that's so important to reducing your score. I'll give you that because I've made it nine out of ten times. Yeah, that's that distance control, and that was no easy two putts on a 200 yard par three, super hole. And um, before we go on to nugget number three, I arrived here uh, last evening, like I said, and uh, the sun was shining. Just take a look at this drone footage, it's, uh, it's something else, and this is going to be 
uh, a host venue for our average golfer of the year competition next year so just take a look at this and uh, see what you're in for It really is in tremendous condition and uh, we're in the first week of October we've had an absolute deluge of rain in the UK and really surprised as just uh, how good it is and uh, the fact I've got my new pristine white foot joys on is, uh, is testament to that. Right, hole 12. Got to a really good start this morning and solid golf. So again, maybe a little bit of course management required here. just a bit too much and I say a bit too much I was trying to cut it and use the wide part of the fairway um, but just cut it a little bit but I suppose again that course management element is I was aiming far enough left knowing that that ball was going to cut and fade we just ended up in the first cut of the rough and uh, you know that's the kind of thing that we're referring to that I spoke about in Nugget 1 assessing the situation it's not just aiming tight right when all the trouble's right and you're going to hit a cut Obvious it seems, but just keep evaluating it each time you get an approach to a shot. Okay, next piece of information, nugget number three, is choose clubs that you are confident with and you're happy to play. It doesn't matter whether you're on your tee, whether you're nestled down in the rough, whether you're standing in the middle of the fairway. Choose clubs that give you confidence. I'm on a par five here. I don't know, maybe the green's reachable in two. I cut it to three wood and really hit the shot of the day, one of my all time best. Pick it up, land on the green, and we're a puff for eagle. Likelihood of that happening, slim to none. So instead, what I'm going to do is choose a club with a lot of loft, a, uh, a lot of CG placed at the back to help me pop this one up and get it out of the rough. And I'm just going to knock it down to the left hand side of these two bunkers. It seems logical, but choosing this club, I've got loads of confidence that I cut through that turf. I like playing this club, so I'm confident with it. I've already hit it this morning and I played well with it. So, choice of club, and then again, we're assessing the situation. Straightforward could cause me a few problems if I don't get this one right. So we're gonna go slightly left of those bunkers. That's exactly where I was aiming. Hopefully we get into some short stuff. And I've got a nice little wedge into the green. Go, go. Okay, that's fine. Again, just avoiding there was not gonna go left there because that bunk came into play. So for me, it's flag or right of flag gives me that kind of leeway to get things wrong. That's low. Low, but pace is good. And it was another par with, uh, we'll give us that one, with not the best of tee shots, but good course management from tee to green. If uh, anybody's wondering 
why I was so confident in winning photo of the week this week it's because unfortunately Tracy couldn't join me and uh, she missed out on uh, what is first of all Peebles in Scotland is a lovely little town on the river stunning uh, place to be and just uh, maybe uh, a mile maybe not even that outside of uh, the town centre is uh, the McDonald Hotel the Cardrona Golf Resort and uh, it's a really good setup and why like I said I've chosen it to be one of the host venues and uh, coming and seeing it today has just reiterated that we've, uh, we've we've got a good place in our hands here and it might be a good thing to do actually if you are interested um, I'm thinking of giving a sort of uh, an early bird kind of situation to the people who register their interest first. So my uh, my email address is on screen for you now. Send me an email if you're interested in, in playing and you'll be the first to know as soon as we've got the agreed dates. Anyway, have a good start to the day. That's uh, another par. So if we're evaluating that hole together right now, then uh, what I'm seeing is a pin that's almost, well, I just can't get to it. And that bunker is uh, is causing me lots of problems. So we need to be centre of the fir trees, uh, maybe 20 foot left of flag at best. Has it got the legs? It's a good shot if it has. No, I don't think so. Just slightly underclubbed with that uh, moisture in the air. Really good strike and right where I aimed again, which is pleasing. So way off with club choice. Uh, at least one more club, maybe even two. And it just shows where course management and poor club selection has put me in danger of making the first bogey of the day. Yeah, that's the wrong line. Ah, oh, that's good. Decent enough in the pace, but always needed to be, you could always see was going to kick um, to the left. And I just pulled it a touch. And as I've just said, I've now left myself in a situation where I've got to make a sort of 10, 12 footer to save par. And that is because my club selection was wrong. Shot was fine. And that just shows, again, it's not necessarily about ability. It's not about the strike. It's not about how good your swing is. If you've got those things wrong, you're going to make bogeys. Oh, you haven't hit it. Had the line as well. Frustrating. First bogey of the day and uh, I only pulled that chip to prove a point really. Uh, I think maybe it's now an opportune moment to go to that photo of the week. And uh, I know I've got this one in the bag, but I think you're going to like what you see from most of them are from last night. They're belters. The photos were half good, weren't they? Right, we've got uh, the 14th. Stroking next two, par five, and um, opportune moments. So about two things. Let's go look at number four, and that being that when you stood on the tee, it's very similar to choosing the right club and the confidence thing. But I think with a tee shot in particular, unless it's a par three. Generally, everybody just reaches for driver. It's like just this automatic thing that we do. We've, we've done it for years. We see the pros do it. It's a done thing. This is 550 yards of Godowit driver. And this hole has got a fair bit of room, to be fair. But if you've got out of bounds, if you've got trees, if you've got water hazards, if you've got bunkers, if you've got problems in your way and you're not too confident with driver, then for Christ's sake, don't play it. Stop playing driver. Um, I've said it on a previous video where we looked at control off the tee. Choose a club that you're confident with. And the longest club, that is, that you're confident with. So that might be a, a seven wood, a five wood. It might be an iron. But so many times we are losing shots through wayward tee shots. And most of those wayward tee shots come with driver. Having said all that, I'm going to hit driver. 
I think my evaluation of this situation is that, you know, I've got a lot of room to play with. I played this last night and there's a lot more room down the left hand side than what it appears. Yeah, that's back into the middle. Really happy swinging it well today. I've got a real interesting combination that I'm playing with right now, this setup. It's not the norm and uh, I think the video on Wednesday night should be really interesting because I have got a shorter shaft in a regular driver head and a combination has been really effective. Now it could be argued that that bunker shot wasn't great and it wasn't great but what I did do is make sure I got out first time and that's hugely important and part of nugget number five. Right I said I need some expert advice with nugget number five it's about being in bunkers but it's about getting out of them with the least amount of damage and essentially that just means getting it on the putting surface so I've got along with me Chris Curran he's director of golf at uh, Cadrona. Yep. Welcome to the channel, first of Thanks, all. Thanks, Andy. Are you playing on the Tartan Pro Tour? Um, yep. yep. So you're half decent, then. Decent player, right? so, <laughs> so bunkers aren't a problem to you, yep. but for many of us golfers, mm -hmm. we can take a few swipes, waste a few, uh, a few, a few strokes yep. on the Rate scorecard. The scorecard yep. I want to know, is there one simple, effective way of trying to ensure we can practice a drill just to get out every time? Yep, definitely. Um, so for me, it all comes with the setup. Okay. So the biggest thing, you see a lot of a lot of guys who struggle in the bunkers they get their weight too far back and they start hitting the sand back here okay the club's on the way up and you're hitting the middle of the ball and thin out of the face and stuff like that so i think the biggest thing ball forward in your stance yeah maybe 60 percent of the weight on your left hand side that helps steepen the angle of attack okay and then we're just trying to hit maybe two inches behind the ball okay and the biggest thing is you've got to stay aggressive okay. you've got to, you're only hitting the sand so you've got to be aggressive and get that ball up and out That's too easy. It's the easiest way you'll always get That's a bunker. That's too easy. Always. So just do a recap on that again. Mm -hmm. So weight 60-40. So weight 60-40 towards the left-hand side. Yeah, yeah. That helps steepen the angle of attack. Yeah. Always a couple of inches behind the ball. Yeah. And the ball forward in your stance. And for there, just keep keep the momentum going. Always accelerate into the ball. Never decelerate. And the ball will just pop up every time. So that's how easy it is. Nugget number five, just to make sure you get out of the bunker. Forget getting fancy where the pin is. Just get it on that putting surface and stop dropping shots. It's a case of practice where you preach here. I've come left um, on what is it? It's a great golf hole. 16th to me is one of my favorite holes here at Cadrona. Um, but you've got to be on the right side of the fairway because the green is directly uh, over that tree. Now, hanging lie, ball well below my feet, Sunday best, yeah maybe, and I'm tempted, I want to have a go at it, but I've got to use a bit of logic, I've got to practice what I've been talking about, take the medicine, scorecard's doing okay, and we just need to wedge into the fairway. And again, I don't want to cut too much of the corner off, I don't want to risk hitting that tree, and uh, that should give us a chance of getting up and down. my word that would have been a uh, heck of a save and I do not know it's gone in that's one of them ones where you'd probably wish that the pin wasn't in um, I'm not sure but either way it's still above ground we made bogey 
could have been a lot worse and uh, course management is uh, certainly keeping this game together but what a golf hole that is that's my favorite on the course i like it even more if i'd have uh, saved that par Could be shot of the day. Oh, sit. That was shot of the day. That's a ball you just want to get away. I couldn't have hit that any better and uh, hopefully leaves a good angle to what is in a real tough finishing hole the Cardona a little bit in between clubs I think I've got a little bit of help down breeze let's finish with something decent land let's hope he's got enough club carry and bounce oh oh what a finish is pin eye left and pin eye and the sun's come out just as i'm finishing fantastic Unfortunately, no birdie to finish, no birdie throughout that nine holes, but plenty of control golf, more than happy with the way I played, and uh, they are definitely five rules that will help you break 90 with no swing changes whatsoever. It's all about making the right decisions at the right time. Club selection, shot type, club choice. It just makes the game a whole lot easier. It's hard enough hitting a golf ball we've got to find other ways of lowering our scores and trust me try these and they work